Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. During the past couple of days I have discussed with fellow developers and colleagues about this concept of the end layer architecture and clean architecture and we have asked ourselves what is actually the difference between end layer and clean architecture. And this question is actually very important because we came to find out that actually the ASP.NET Core documentation when it comes to architecting ASP.NET Core applications is a little bit misleading from my point of view. And that's why in this video, I would like to take a deep look into what the end layer architecture is, how it is supposed to work, and then of course, look at a project structure for a, re a real project according to the end layer application. And then I want to do exactly the same for the clean architecture part, like, okay, discussing what clean architecture is, how it is supposed to work and then take a look at the folder and, and the project structure of a clean architecture project. And last but not least, I want to actually compare them side by side to see exactly the end layer solution, the clean architecture solution, and then find out exactly what's the real difference between end layer and clean architecture. So stay tuned because we will get right into it. Let's start with the end layer architecture. So according to the traditional, very traditional end layer architecture principles, we have commonly three layers of the application. The first one is, of course, the UI layer that you see here right on top. The second one is the business logic layer or the BLL layer. And last but not least is the data access layer. Now, when we discuss end layer architecture, we have also to think a little bit historically how these things evolve. Because right at, let's say, the beginning, maybe, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, we had this concept where virtually all the applications were kind of like, okay, we have the user interface, which in ASP.NET Core would have been something like uh, web pages or maybe a little bit later views. But then we had this entire business logic layer where everything or literally everything did happen. And that business logic layer talked to the data access layer to actually get the data out from the database and present it or write down data or write data into the database to persist new information or new state. Now, this is actually very, very important because initially, uh, well, a lot of logic was actually scattered in the data access layer using store procedure. So in a regular NR application back in the days, we had this business logic layer that kind of like did maybe a little bit of validation, but then also a lot of the, or the big part of the logic was happening in store procedure, procedures in the database. So the business logic layer would then just call the data access layer, that layer would execute a store procedure and just return a result. And then the business logic layer would present this result back to the user interface. Now, when we take a deeper look into this, actually, when it comes to how the dependencies actually work here is that we have this user interface layer that kind of like depends on the business logic layer, just like we see here in this picture with this error. And then the business logic layer will depend on the data access layer. However, the core problem here with this end layer approach is that a lot of our business logic actually is in the database and we have a very, very strong and tight coupling between all the different layers because the user interface layer fully depends on the business logic and the business logic, unfortunately, fully depends on the data access layer. Now, of course, we have seen what disadvantages or developers have seen what disadvantages this approach brings also from a more general approach to software architecture, because we came to the conclusion that, okay, it's maybe not a good idea to have business logic actually scattered throughout the database and the business logic layer. And then, uh, well, step by step, developers and architects uh, started to actually move out business logic from the data access layer from store procedure into the business logic layer. And then we would have some real business logic ongoing there. However, we still had a very tight coupling between this business logic layer and the data access layer. And then dependency inversion or dependency injection containers became very, very popular. And this also did bring, let's say, a saving idea to this entire setup. Because instead of depending the, or, or instead of the business logic depending on the data access layer directly, we have introduced abstractions. And then the business logic would just, well, expose some interfaces, some behavior that it needs. And then we have the data access totally decoupled 
from the business logic layer. And that kind of like solves a lot of problems and make makes things a lot easier to do. And this is what I call, or I would call a modern end layer application. And to be honest, for very small or even medium sized applications, I don't see anything wrong with this idea of end layer architecture. But let's also take a look into how this type of architectural diagram would translate into a Visual Studio solution, like a regular ASP.NET Core application that is structured and designed according to the end layer architecture. Here we are in this very, very basic application that we have structured according to the end layer principles. And as we have seen, according to the end layer principles, we have actually three layers like the UI user interface, and then we have the business logic. And usually we call this business or in a lot of projects, we call this business logic layer core. And then we have this data access layer. Now for the API here, we just have a regular API, but for a regular UI layer here, it would also involve having view, uh, having and returning views. But for simplicity sake, right now we are just uh, having an API and we just return something from that specific API. But the API right now is actually not that important, but what's important is how the dependencies between all these other layers look like right now. Because we have this core project, which according to the end layer is the core business layer. What, me, what, what we mean by that is that here we have all the business logic that we kind of like need for this application to work. Now, what we have here, for instance, we have an orders controller in the API. And this order controller right now implements just one single action, which is the action of place order. So we just want to place an order and we of course use mediator here in this case to process this order that needs to be um, placed and completed. Now, of course that this UI layer is very, very simple. It just uses a command from the application layer or from the core layer and the command does actually all the job and then the API just returns a result or a response. And we see that we have kind of like this dependency between the API layer and the core, which is actually okay because as we have seen according to the diagram, the API layer or the UI layer can depend directly on the core because the core is the part where everything happens. And when we say that the core is the part where everything happens, well, we mean it like for real. Here in the core, we have first of all the models, and that's a very important point. We'll see later why. And in the models, we have this very basic modeling for our exact need right now. And this is, for instance, like, yeah, we, we have a product. We have a product order item that is placed on an order and we have the order. So these are the models. Once again, the models here are placed in the core because this core or this business logic layer is responsible for the entire business logic of the application. But what else do we actually need except that? Well, of course we need, since we are using mediator, we need commons and common handlers. In this case, we just use one command. So we have created a folder here for the commons. Here we have this command that takes in an order and we have the common handler for that in which we actually do a lot of stuff, which is actually not bad by default. But what we do here, of course, and here we introduce the other part that we have in this business logic layer, because this business logic layer, as we've seen, needs to talk to the database. But we don't really want to have a real dependency or a very strong or, or a tightly coupled dependency between this core and the data access. We want them to actually be kind of like a little bit self-contained. And that's why also in this core, we usually expose or create the abstractions that we need for outside implementers in order for our business logic layer to work properly. So that's why we have defined here an iOrder repository which has this one task place order async. We have a product repository, which has this method or exposes this method, this decrease products quantity. And we have also a, a unit of work that, uh, well, just starts a transaction and then commits a transaction when we need it. So once again, for the external things that are external to the business logic layer, but we still need them in order for this layer to function correctly, we just expose interfaces and then those interfaces in this case are implemented here in this data access layer where we have this unit of work 
we have the DB context, the regular DB context, because we are using an SQL database and we are using Entity Framework Core. And we have the repositories like the order repository and the product repository. And I would like us to take just a look at what exactly this repository does, because that, this would also be a very important information when we go over to clean architecture. So in this case, my order repository, when we have this place order async, now what it does is, okay, it takes the order, it updates uh, the order placed date with the date time now, because right now it's actually the moment when we have uh, placed the order, and then it just updates uh, the order in the DB context. So that's what we are doing here. But then we have this product repository. And once again, let's check what we do here. So actually, the logic that we have here is we get a list of product items which come from the order. And for each item in that list, we kind of like want to look for the product on the database. And what we would need to do is if we find that product, we kind of like need to update this quantity on hand property, like we have to decrease the stock information or the available stock of that specific product, because we just have an order that was paid for that product. And then of course, after we do this, after we set this information, we also update the products, the, this product in the DB context. Now, coming back to the handler, what we do here is kind of like we orchestrate everything together. Now, here we have this I order repository, I product repository, and the I unit of work. And we use the unit of work to start the transaction. We use the order repository to place the order. We use the product repo to decrease uh, the product's uh, quantity or the, the quantity on hand of that specific product or for each specific product. And then we kind of like just commit the transaction and return the new, new unit because this type of method doesn't really return anything right now. And as mediator implemented by default, we have this concept of unit that we return. So this is actually what the handler does. And of course, everything comes back to the controller and then the controller just returns a result. In our case, it is just a no content. So not nothing, nothing very fancy. However, important here is to note how once again, this dependency and the fact that we have this business logic layer, which is the core, and in this layer, we have virtually everything that we need for the business logic of our application. Like we have uh, the models that we need, we have the comments and the comments handlers that we need. And for things that kind of like depend on external implementations, we just expose interfaces and then we rely on other consumers or well, we rely on other libraries that need to actually implement those interfaces so that we are not tightly coupled to the implementers. We just define the interface as a client, as someone who needs something to be done. And then we do the implementation for this by just kind of like implementing the, the interface. And if we also take a brief look or try to remember the, the diagram that we actually had previously, we can even see that we have inverted the dependencies because right now uh, or previously in the very traditional N layer architecture, actually the business logic layer depended on the data access layer. But according to this more modern approach to N layer architecture, right now the data access layer actually depends on our core because it implements the interfaces that we have there. And before we go over to clean architecture, there is a point that I really want to emphasize and make clear. So according to the official documentation on Microsoft, on learn.microsoft.com, when it comes to architecting modern ASP.NET Core application, basically what's described there is that, okay, in traditional end layer architecture, we had this dependency between core and data access, which is true. Very, very traditionally, we had this dependency. But then they say that the solution to this is, hey, we just implement dependency inversion using interfaces and the DI container, and we have clean architecture. And this is, from my point of view, very, very misleading because clean architecture actually means uh, a totally different approach in terms of how we think about what should be placed in which layer. And this is what we will look into right now. 
Clean architecture comes with a slightly different approach. And by the way, this concept of clean architecture was introduced by Robert C. Martin, also called Uncle Bob, around 2012. And it is a very, very clear and uh, well, well explained and documented way of organizing and architecting applications. So when we think about clean architecture, from my point of view, it means that we kind of like have to create a project structure or design an application that kind of like adheres to these principles or at least to the most principles that were exposed initially by Robert C. Martin and then, uh, well, explained and also talked about by a lot of different other authors. Now, according to uh, Robert C. Martin or Uncle Bob, we have here on the left, this is actually the part uh, that's extracted from his initial blog post when he described this clean architecture approach. And according to him, basically, when we design an application, we need to think about it as having it layered, but according to, let's say, concentric circles. And he introduces this concept, which is very important that we have at the core of the application, we have this idea of entities, which are the enterprise business rules for that specific application domain, like the rules without which the classes from that specific domain cannot really interact one with the other, or the rules that make sure that each instance of each object in, in the application is always actually on a valid state. And that's a very, very important layer. Now, then we have this use cases layer that kind of like represents application business rules or application use cases. Like for instance, when we have this web application, when a user places an order, when he, he clicks the button like place order or something like that, that's an application use case because the user has clicked the button in the application and something needs to happen. So this is an application use case. However, what happens, for instance, once an order is placed, like, okay, do we need to set a, a date placed date on the order? Do we need to decrease the quantity on hand for each product in that certain order? These things are enterprise business rules, so they belong to the domain itself. Do you see the difference? This is application use cases or application business rules and domain rules or entity business rules or enterprise business rules. And above this layer, we have this green circle, which contains the controllers. This kind of like a little bit uh, self-explanatory for us because we use controllers in our API, but also the concept of presenters. Presenters in clean architecture are uh, basically, well, pieces of software that kind of like take uh, the result from a use case interaction and turn it into something that the application layer itself or the, the, the UI layer or the controller can actually use and, and return. And that's what we have here in this green circle. So theoretically, this belongs from our API point of view to the user interface, because in API, at least from my point of view, the user interface is actually the JSON that you return uh, as a response. And then, of course, we have this blue circle, which uh, contains virtually uh, the outermost dependencies, like things that, uh, that, that needs to be implemented in a very, very concrete detail, like what database do we use? What UI framework, framework do you use? So that's actually, let's say, the most abstracted away part, but when we write it, that's actually the most detail, like it has very, very specific implementation details that depend on frameworks and tools and database and inf infrastructure that we use. Now, if we take this model, uh, with concentric circles that we have, once again, we have extracted this from Robert C. Martin's blog and try to actually apply it into a standard layered view that we have also uh, looked at when we talked about N-layer architecture, we could have this type of structure where we have this user interface layer. And in our case, since we are building an API, once again, I would consider this user interface and the API layer kind of like being the same. But then we have this application layer or the use cases, which is once again, or that correspond to the application business rules. Now, once again, when a user clicks the place order button, what needs to happen in the application? This is an application business rule. But what does this mean for the domain? Do we need to set something on the order? Do we need to decrease quantity of available products? That's actually part of the entities business rules or enterprise business rules. So that's why we have this kind of layer here. But when it comes to the infrastructure layer in which we also include the database, so the data access part, 
this they, this infrastructure layer in this kind of view we can think about it as just being kind of like a side it, it's not really part of, of of the regular layering of the application it's just an outside concern that happens to do something for our for our application but it's not really core to our application layering itself so that's why i have placed this infrastructure at the side and we know that this infrastructure will depend on this application or the use cases layer, because here in this use cases layer, we will have or we will expose all the needed interfaces for, for our application to work properly. And then in, in the infrastructure, we would implement them. So infrastructure would depend here on application. However, in case, and this, this is kind of like just an exception, because in ASP.NET Core, we have this ASP.NET Core Web API application, and ASP.NET Core happens to also have the DI container. And when we register something into DI container, we need to provide both the interface and the implementation. So that's why the user interface or the API layer usually actually does not really depend on the infrastructure layer at all, but it needs a compile time dependency because when we build the application, like when we want to register services, we need to have both the interface and the implementation. So that's why we need this runtime dependency so that ASP.NET Core knows where to look for the implementation of that specific interface. But really in an ASP.NET Core application, that program.cs file is the only place where we should have a using towards this infrastructure project, nowhere else. Cool. So that's kind of like from a very architectural point of view, how we should design or create an application or design an application that, uh, or, or according at least to clean architecture principles. And of course, the next step that I would like to go to is let's have a look into how does this translate into practice and what does this mean or how would this be implemented in a real solution according to clean architecture in .NET and ASP.NET Core. Here we have virtually the exact same project that we had earlier, like placing an order, but we have structured it according to clean architecture. And as we have discussed along with the diagram for what actually clean architecture means, we have these four kind of like layers. We have the API in our case, which contains this order controller. Now from the controller perspective, it actually does exactly the same thing that it did also in the end layer application. So there's really nothing much more to explain there. However, what we need to actually be aware of is that we have kind of like here two different layers. Like we have the application layer, once again, this is the application use cases or what happens, what should the application do when a user clicks the place order button. So that's this kind of like contains or this is the application logic. And for that, we have this comment like the place order comment and we have the handler like the place or uh, the, the place order handler. And of course, we also here expose the abstractions for our infrastructure layer. In this case, our infrastructure layer contains actually only the data access part. And this is the data access. It's exactly the same as it was previously. Uh, really no change. We have unit of work. We have the DB context. We have the order repository and we have the product repository. However, the most important part is that you see now in this application layer, we don't have the models anymore. Because as we have seen according to clean architecture, models, which are also entities or called entities, should be actually be part of the core of the application and it should be self-contained and it should contain all the enterprise business rules all, all, and all the enterprise logic validation. So we have moved the models into this domain layer or entities layer. Now, we, we didn't even just move these models here, but as we see that, or as we said, that entities should contain also enterprise business rules, like real business rules, we have moved actually some of the things that we were doing previously in the repository, we have moved in the domain model itself, going towards what we call a rich domain model. And by the way, on this concept of rich domain model, we have a really widespread or more in-depth explanation in a, in a dedicated video, which you can find in the description below or some here, somewhere here on the screen right now. So you might just click on it and take a look at that. Now, the idea is that according to this clean architecture, what we need to do is we need to actually move 
the enterprise rules or the, the core domain rules for our application. Like those are rules that really don't care and really don't need to know about what happens otherwise. Like if we use a database, uh, if we don't use a database, do we persist information? We don't persist information. So the rules here in these domain models should really not uh, bother about anything else. It should bother only on actions that can happen inside the application and that need to change the state of the application itself. And that's why, for instance, for this product, we have exposed this decrease quantity uh, on hand method. And the repository, as we see here for the product repository, this one doesn't really know what this means. It just knows, okay, I have a product and I need to decrease the quantity. So I just call this method and decrease the quantity. So you see that the logic for what actually from an enterprise business rule perspective, the logic for what decreasing, let's say the quantity on hand of a product means is not in the repository anymore. It's actually in the entities. It's in the core business or core domain of the application. And the same, it goes for order. Like what does it mean from this model from this entity point of view to place an order. And well, in that case on the order, we expose this place order method. And then here we implement, okay, what does it mean for us? Of course, in a real application, this logic might be, well, a little bit longer. It might be a little bit more complex, but the, but the idea is the same. We create or we implement all the logic for what placing an order means for that domain in the domain layer itself or in the entities layer itself. And then in the data access layer, as we have seen in the repository, we just call these methods. For instance, also for this order repository, we know that we have an order and we just call place order. And that's it. The order itself should know or should be the only one who knows exactly what placing an order means from a business rule perspective. In our case, this logic simple once again is that we just set this date of um, of uh, the order placed to daytime now. In reality, that could be more complex, but I guess that the idea is very, very easy to grasp here. Now, as we have moved some logic actually from our other layers into our domain layer or into our entities, this once again became a rich domain model, and that's really a vital part of what clean architecture means. Like having really, or saying that you just have clean architecture, but you still just have here plain old C-sharp objects or POCOs with no behavior at all. And if your business rules are scattered across your repositories and across the application layer, well, even if you have this project structure that we have here, that's not really clean architecture. It's still an N layer architecture because all the logic itself no matter if it is uh, uh, application logic or uh, uh, well enterprise or business rule logic, it's it's everything there. So it's not clean architecture anymore. That's why for clean architecture, once again, it's very important that we would have a rich domain model. And then coming back to this, our application layer or this use cases, like we have this handler and this handler does actually, well, pretty much the same that it also did earlier. It kind of like just says here, uh, order repo, okay, place order, decrease quantity, uh, uh, commit transaction, and then kind of like that's it. We will uh, retur return a unit to the caller, so to the controller in this case. Cool. So let's go one step further. And the last thing that I would like to do right now is take a look and compare a little bit side by side what is actually the project structure for clean architecture and what should be the project structure for n-layer architecture and by also explaining why that project structure is really important and why we should actually stick to certain principles when we want to create an application according to n-layer or when we want to create an application according to clean architecture. The first thing that we would see here is that okay in, N, in the n-layer approach as we have described we usually have these uh, three different layers like we have this API layer or the UI layer. Uh, in other cases, then we have this core. And in this core, we really have everything like abstractions, handlers, commands, and models. And then we have the data access where obviously we just have the repositories and the unit of work. And when we look at the clean architecture on the right side, we see that, hey, we have four layers. We have this API layer, which is kind of like the same. We have the data access layer, which is kind of like the same as for the end layer.
but we have actually splitted this core that we had in end layer in two different layers, which is the application and which is the domain. And this is actually a very, very important part. And I cannot really emphasize it enough because one of the common problems with end layer architecture that actually all, all, almost nobody is talking about is that in an end layer, okay, we have resolved the problems with the dependencies by uh, implementing or by using abstractions and by making use of a DI container. And that is great. However, the main problem from an architectural point of view with the end layer application is that it has just one layer, this core layer or the business logic layer, how, how we called it on the diagram. And in that layer, we have actually application specific logic. We have business specific logic. We have everything right there in one uh, spot. And one of the most important things is that when you create a bigger application or even a mid-sized application, having everything really into one single layer isn't the best thing to do because it's, it's less readable, it's harder to maintain, and it kind of like doesn't respect the idea of single responsibility. Because I say always the solid principles, they apply from the smallest parts of our code like methods till the biggest parts of our code, which would be layers in this case. And each layer should be responsible to do only one thing. Now, in our end layer application, a core layer or a business logic layer would do at least two different things. It would handle the application specific business logic and it would handle the domain specific business logic. Now, of course, you will see also other projects that current kind of like instead of having only one core project, you would see, for instance, having a project for core dot abstractions where abstractions are, are, are placed and then another project for core dot models where the models are placed. And even if there are different projects, semantically, they actually belong to the same layer. So it's not really that each project should actually belong to only one layer. We could have different projects that belong logically to the same application layer. So no matter if you split this core project in several other sub projects, it's still only one layer and it's still responsible for handling both application business logic and enterprise business logic or business rules. And this is what we come to solve, or this is one of the most important things that actually clean architecture solves because it splits kind of like this into two different layers. Like, hey, we place all the application business logic in one layer and we call it application or use cases. And we place our domain specific business logic into this domain layer or in the entities. And this naturally means that we will also go towards a rich domain model where our models themselves would also contain information about or expose methods to change the state of that models and make sure that we have all or, or the models are always in a valid state. So kind of like that's the really main, main difference when it comes to end layer versus clean architecture when we look at the folder structure or at the layers of, of, of this architecture. Like for the end layer, we have this core that kind of like has everything in it. And in clean architecture, we kind of like make this distinction between application business logic and domain business logic. And of course, to this, we will add this principle of dependencies always flowing inwards. So the API should depend on the core and the core uh, actually, well, should not depend directly on data access, but it, it actually exposes, uh, well, an abstraction and we invert the dependencies in case of the end layer. So kind of like we can apply this principle like inwards flowing dependencies is a concept that's really well theoretized, of course, in the clean architecture. But simply bringing up that specific principle and making sure that also in our end layer application, we have dependency inversion that kind of like dies, doesn't make it to be a clean architecture. Like once again, I would, like, I would like to emphasize clean architecture means making the distinction between a layer that handles application business logic and the layer that handles enterprise or business rules. This is the core concept of a clean architecture. To this, we add, of course, this idea of inwards flowing dependencies, like in the clean architecture, API should depend on application, application should depend on domain. Nothing depends on the data access, which is seen or considered actually uh, 
at the side as just an infrastructure concern. And uh, yeah, th that's kind of like the main differences between these types of architecture. If you think that this content was useful for you, please don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do it already. And also feel free to share this content with your colleagues, with your peers, in your social networks, via Teams, wherever you think there might be somebody interested in this type of talk, share it with them. And I guess that they will be very, very uh, happy. Also, if you have any questions or just want to get a discussion started, please feel free to hit the comment section and just leave me a comment. And I would be more than happy to get into a discussion with you regarding these topics. And maybe you have other questions regarding other technical topics. That would also be fine. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.